If you have an adventure or dual sport bike that doesn't have rim locks on it, then I'm here to tell you why you should run those and I'll even show you how to get them installed. The reason you want to add a rim lock to your wheels is to help prevent any issues while you're out riding. Now the first issue we're trying to take care of is with the tube. So what can happen is your tire can actually spin separately from the rim and it's going to rip your valve stem from the tube. That's what happened on this KLR. This happens under acceleration and braking. So a rim lock, that's going to help us with that problem. Now the other problem, if you do happen to get a flat tire, um, what can happen is the tire can actually pop off of the rim and if you do have a rim lock in there It's going to help keep everything together while you get the bike slowed down When you go to order this rim lock make sure you type in your year make and model and that way you're going to get the correct size The whole reason we're talking about this is a lot of adventure and dual sport bikes They don't come with rim locks from the factory and if you're doing anything that's more serious than just riding around the block I highly recommend adding a rim lock to the front and the rear. That's gonna help prevent these issues. And just keep in mind, if you add a rim lock, you're also gonna to have to balance the wheel. So we'll show you how to do that. Let's get started. As far as parts go, we have our rim lock. You can get a few different options that are even lighter weight than this on the website. And then we're also gonna need some wheel weights. We have our tube and some tire mounting lube, and you can find all of this stuff on the website. To do this job, we have some safety glasses, rubber gloves, rags, drill and drill bits, auto centering punch, tire changing tools, and then along with some common hand tools, three millimeter Allen and a three thirty second Allen key. This one's gonna fit the wheel weights. Then we have the tusk balancing and truing stand. The first thing we need to do is remove the rear wheel. Every bike will be different and you can refer to your model specific service manual for that. Once you've done that, you'll remove the tire from it and we do have a how-to video to help guide you through the tire removal process. The next thing we need to do is determine where our rim lock is going to go. The only thing you need to avoid is this weld that's in the rim. You don't want to drill a hole through that. Some rims actually have a rubber plug, so if that's the case with you, you can just pop that plug out and use the new rim lock. You might have to drill a larger diameter, you might not. Um, but ours doesn't have the rubber plug, so we're actually just going to go across from our valve stem hole and we're going to be offset just a little bit from that and that way when we add weights, they're not all going to be sitting right next to that valve stem. So right here, this is across from our valve stem and you can see the spacing between spokes here is bigger than the spokes next to it. So anytime you have that going on, you want to go in this bigger area. So we're going to use an auto centering punch to mark the center of this space. And then we're going to drill a pilot hole and then we'll keep scaling up with bigger drill bits until we can fit the rim lock into place. The final size drill bit for us was 21 64ths of an inch, but every rim lock is going to be a little bit different. Just make sure you're taking the minimal amount of material away, but still large enough that the stem is going to fit through. And we're just going to use a round file to smooth any rough edges. Once you've cleaned up the hole, you can install your rim lock. We've got our washer and the nut. We're only going to put the nut on a couple of threads right now, and then we'll reinstall that rim band. You want to make sure that it's perfectly lined up with the hole for your valve stem and covering all of the spokes. At this point, we can reinstall the tire. Some tires are going to have a yellow dot right here, and that's going to be the lightest point on the tire. So you can line that up with your valve stem, or you can put the lightest point on your new rim lock, and that's just going to help with balancing, which we'll show you how to do as soon as we get this tire on. And just a quick tip when you're going back together, always make sure you're using a quality tube. If it's an old tube, you definitely want to replace it. Now I'm going to use one of my favorite tire changing tools, the Baja No Pinch Tool. These things make the job so much easier, and if you haven't seen these yet, go check them out. Once you've set the air pressure, we're going to tighten down the rim lock. And it's a good idea 
to check the tightness on this after your first ride, everything's going to settle just a little bit. Okay, to get this balanced, we have the shaft for our balancing and truing stand. I already have the stop on the very end and then the cone, those are tightened down. So we'll slide that in from the back side. And then we're going to take the other cone and you just want to set that into the wheel bearing. Make sure that's all pressed together tight. Then we're going to tighten down the set screw. Then we'll put this other stop on. We'll leave it loose for now. And we'll set this in the truing stand. Now this style of balancing is what's known as static balancing. And this is gonna be the easiest way to balance your tire at home. Now we'll tighten the set screw on the stop. All we need to do at this point, we're just gonna let the tire drop to its lowest point and let it settle. And then we'll mark that spot. So obviously this is gonna be right by that rim lock. So we'll mark this lowest point. And you can use some chalk, a Sharpie, or whatever you have. I'm actually gonna mark it with some tape right now just so you guys can see it better. So that spot right there, that's the heaviest spot on the rim. You can verify that. It should drop back into the same place every time. If it keeps moving around, you could have a bent shaft or some bad wheel bearings or something else going, going wrong with this setup. Then we can keep adding weights until the wheel is balanced. You might have to add or remove weights once everything is tightened down, but you'll want to get everything as close to balanced as you can at this point. And you can see there's a fatter end on these weights that's just gonna go over the spoke nipple. So once you have the wheel balanced, we're gonna tighten down the set screws on our wheel weights. If you have the crimp on kind, just crimp them down. And then we're gonna rotate the wheel in a couple different spots and make sure it stayed balanced. So if you can rotate this wheel around and stop it and it doesn't rotate at all, then you know the wheel is balanced and you can reinstall this back onto the bike. Once you have the rear wheel installed, you can do these same steps to the front wheel to get a rim lock on there as well. No matter what style of wheel weights you're using, this process will be similar to get the tire balanced, but a couple of tips for the stick-on style of wheel weights are you need to determine roughly how many weights are gonna go on before you actually stick them in place. So a good way to do that is rotate the wheel up just a little bit, maybe even 90 degrees from that heaviest point and let the wheel drop and you can see how quick it drops and that's gonna help you guess roughly how many weights you're gonna need. You can see on ours, you know, this one's moving a little bit, but with how big the tire is, we're probably gonna need at least an ounce on here. So we'll tape that into place and verify that that's correct and you can make any adjustments from there and do this as many times as you need. Once you have the correct amount of weight on there, you can go ahead and mark that point and you wanna make sure the rim surface is clean and oil free and then you can stick the weights into place. A couple more things with these wheel weights is they do come in different colors, so pay attention to that. And these stick-ons, they come in different widths. So you wanna make sure you have enough width on your rim versus the actual weight. And you can look in the product description to see how wide these actually are and make sure they fit your rim. And that's all there is to adding rim locks to your dual sport or adventure motorcycle. If you need these parts or any other accessories for your bike, be sure to get those on our website and subscribe to our channel for more helpful content like this. Thanks for watching.